Hello, Professor Coiler from a very snowy Denver, Colorado. I think we're up to four feet of snow right now, uh, and it's not stopping anytime soon. So um, it's nice to be snowed in, uh, and what better way than to uh, finalize my project. So this week we looked at salinization of soils, and um, ultimately what I did was tested different levels of salinity on beans to see uh, what percent of salinity the bean would germinate, if it even did germinate. I did have a hypothesis that I created prior to the experiment, and based on my knowledge and understanding from the module, um, I hypothesized that a minimum of five beans would sprout to completion in the 0.0% salinity group. Um, I also believe that the salinity, salinity level was low enough in the 0.5 that I was expecting to see at least two beans sprout to completion in that group, the 0 0.5 group. And then I did not think I would see any beans sprout in any of the other Petri dishes uh, just due to the salinity levels um, and especially the 2.0 salinity level. So my variables, my controlled variable was that there were 10 beans in five different Petri dishes uh, those petri dishes were kept at the same room temperature in a dark location and uh, their weight remained the same throughout the experiment. The independent variable was that the salinity volume was different in each dish and the dependent uh, variable was to see if the bean would germinate um, over an occurrence of five days and track the differences if there were any. So what I did was, um, you know, per the steps that was suggested, we placed 10 beans into each of the different Petri dishes and um, put paper towel in there, sized appropriately. Each Petri dish was then labeled uh, 0 0.0, 0 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 1 1 and 2.0. Then we prepared the saline solution and uh, after pouring the appropriate saline solution into each of the five petri dishes, uh, each dish was then weighed. And then uh, we placed the, I placed the petri dish in a box and I kept it in, um, uh, I placed it in a box and kept it at room temperature in a dark place where they were not disturbed. Uh, then I added distilled water to each petri dish at the end of every night to maintain its weight. And at the end of the fifth day, I recorded the results um, from the germination of each bean. So throughout the, uh, throughout the experiment then, uh, we, I, I looked at a couple of different uh, things that were going on. Um, but to answer some of the questions that were asked, um, explain why salinization is a concern for agriculture around the globe. And so what I had indicated was that salinization is a concern as it slows the growth, uh, the growth of crops as the crop is not capable of taking in water. Uh, we are supposed to see an increase in population by 2050, and an increase in population will require a higher need or demand for food. If we cannot produce the crops to feed the people, the effect could be detrimental to our global population. Rising sea levels are hurting the crops. Um, we're seeing higher levels of uh, salt along the coastal lines and climate change is causing the rise in the sea levels. Um, and then therefore it just becomes a cyclic problem. Um, the purpose of using distilled water in this experiment was that their uh, distilled water has no impurities. Therefore, it's a great tool when conducting this experiment um, and it helps us report and collect accurate data. The petri dishes containing the beans were weighed every 24 hour intervals to see if there was any uh, varietal differences in the water absorption with each of the seed with each seed and to see if the process of germination was occurring. Uh, additionally, uh, the minimum salt concentration that affect germination in my results, uh, I'm sorry, what was the minimum? A salt concentration that affected uh, the bean germination in my results. So this was kind of interesting and I really didn't enjoy this um, uh, experiment. There were two beans that had incomplete germination at 0, 0. Um, Additionally, there were two beans that had incomplete germination at 0. 0.5. For a couple of days, I thought I had done something wrong because nothing was happening. The beans were just sitting there 
Um, they didn't seem like any of them were shutting their shell. Uh, so I really went back and revisited how I had conducted the experiment just to see if maybe I missed something or didn't do something correct. However, on the third day is when I noticed the change. Um, I saw the tail being developed out of one of the beans in the 0 0.0, 0 0.5, and 1.0. Um, the result of all of the beans remained intact as a bean, unfortunately, um, but understanding why uh, due to the levels of salinization. I would have liked to have seen a bean form uh, to completion. I was really hoping, um, and per my hypothesis, I thought maybe I would see at least five in 0 0.0. Um, and then I definitely, I would have planted one of them, um, if not a couple of them, just to see what would have happened. Um, so it was kind of a cool experiment to uh, go through and, and to test. And my I did not meet my hypothesis. Um, things just kind of went the exact opposite. <clears throat> um, based on my results, uh, what I categorized the bean species used in this experiment as halophate or glycophate. And I, my answer was uh, some of these beans in this experiment were able to grow with some salinization, which could, which would categorize them as halophytes. However, a halophyte is a plant adapted to growing in saline conditions, as in like a salt marsh. However, to answer the question of the experiment, I would say our beans are glycophates, as glycophates is a, is a halophate that can only tolerate relatively low concentrations of salt. The reason that I chose... Um, glycophate is because uh, we didn't have any beans sprouting in, or I didn't have any beans sprouting in 2.0 percent solution uh, saline solution so um, that just says to me that they are uh, glycophates so to show you my uh, results I wish I had a reverse camera um, and I have this in the slide deck for you as well professor um, let me see where, there we go. Uh, I have this in, in the slide deck for you as well. Um, just kind of showing the results of the beans and especially the ones that I had noted as 0, 0.0 uh, who had started to sprout and 0 0.5 and 1.0. It was kind of cool to see them coming out of their shell a little bit. Um, but unfortunately, I did not have many uh, that did much of anything. And then uh, here are my overall results for the saline levels, 0, 0.0 through 2.0. Um, so here are those results. Again, that, these results will be in the PowerPoint slide. And then lastly, here is my data observation as it pertained to each, each Petri dish how many beans did what and at what level. Um, so my results are of the 50 beans, 0% or zero beans uh, reached complete germination, 14% or seven beans reached incomplete germination, and 86 or 43 beans had no germination. So in conclusion, uh, based on my hypothesis and results of the experiment, I do not have any beans from any of the Petri dishes that sprouted to completion. Uh, this was a shock to me as I really felt like the beans at 0, 0.0 uh, and even 0. 0.5 would have sprouted on distilled water, uh, specifically 0. 0.0. I was excited to see that I had some beans start the process, uh, yet were considered incomplete. And I have learned that through the course of this module, certain plants have a salt tolerance. Uh, if that tolerance is exceeded, the crop will not be able to absorb water and therefore grow. I found a great article um, by Bojanovic and uh, his colleagues, uh, and he said salinity acts like drought on plants, preventing roots from performing their osmotic activity where water and nutrients move from an area of high concentration. Therefore, because the salt levels in the soil, water and nutrients cannot move into the plant roots. Um, thank you again for this experiment. I really enjoyed it, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.